The NFL trade deadline is just days away. So before we get into some trade rumors, speculation ideas out there around Seattle, I want you guys to let me know if you think Seattle will make a trade, any at all, between now and this year's NFL trade deadline. Pretty simple question. One for yes, zero for no. Our first trade rumor focuses on LJ Collier, and this one comes to us from... Everybody. Um, Collier's been named, like, all the outlets are doing, like, oh, one trade candidate for each team. Like, every single one has put down LJ Collier, and I think for very understandable reasons. I think we are at the point with Collier, who I really hoped was going to have a breakout year. A change of scenery is needed. Whether it's in a day, two days, next off season, whatever. It's just not going to work in Seattle for Collier, which is a huge disappointment. Another early round missed pick by Seattle. He was a disaster his first year. Most of his stats you see over his career have actually come in 2020. The issue is this season, in 2021, LJ Collier has more often than not been a healthy scratch. And that's a real big disappointment. Rasheem Green has been playing plenty as the overarching reminder that I'll tell everyone here, I know Seattle really likes to rotate and mix and match their defensive line. So I just put it on here in a way and get all the names on for you guys. Don't freak out too much over the exact ordering and position or whatever. You, you guys and I both know how the defense tends to operate. Anyway, Robert Nikondichi has been active in games over LJ Collier. And that's, that, that's a pretty big surprise because... I mean, Nikonich hasn't done much in his NFL career overall. Those are all like, ooh, red flag, red flags. And I just think we are at the point where Collier's, in his best interest, in Seattle's best interest, is to shop him. Now, I don't know what exactly you're going to be able to get for Collier in exchange. Maybe you're getting a late round pick, something in that type of area. I don't think he's going to command anywhere near his first round draft status. Maybe you get a sixth, I think if you're lucky. So if I'm right on that trade value, what would you do with LJ Collier? Would you keep him or would you trade him? Get your your GM hat on and let me know what you think. You can type in T for you would trade him or type in K for you would keep him. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments section. We'll stick on the D line now. Now a target for Seattle. As this is, comes from fan-sided, they suggested going out and getting Fletcher Cox. And my first thought was, ah, it seems like a bit too much. It's expensive. And then I thought about it a little bit more. His cap hit's not that expensive. You'd owe him a little over a million bucks for the rest of the year. That's certainly feasible. The big problem is that even though I think Fletcher Cox would be, be a nice boost to your interior pressure, he is an aging player. And on top of that, he hasn't been as good as he's been at his absolute best in his very impressive NFL career. He's not bad, but he's not quite like, you know, top of the line, super high level, peak Fletcher Cox. He'd still be, I think, a damn good starter for you on this football team. Here's where I get into issues. Should Seattle actually be buying players like a Fletcher Cox? I know that maybe Pete Carroll wants to go win games right now, but I'm not sure that's where Seattle should be at. I don't know if it really makes sense for a team to be full-fledged buyers or even full-fledged sellers. And we'll get to that side of it here in a little bit. But what do you think? I'm making you pick one or the other. No cop-out answers here today on our Seattle Seahawks channel. What should the Seahawks be this year? Type in B for they should be buyers. They should go add assets, add players at the trade deadline. Or type S for they should be sellers, trade away pieces and veterans, and focus more on the future. Get your votes in for me in the comments. Please do not shoot the messenger on this one. It's Russell Wilson trade again. Of course it is. Uh, comes to us from Pro Football Talk. Wow, shocking, right? Uh, Florio is again pushing a Russell Wilson trade before the deadline. And Florio was like, well, maybe Russell Wilson. He does this all the time. He does this. You can't technically rule it out, therefore I'll talk about it, which it just annoys me so much when you're pro football talk. You've got the big enough audience there. Come on now, buddy. He said, well, maybe Wilson could force a trade before the deadline, go in a Super Bowl somewhere else. Here's what Florio wrote. 
We'll likely never know if Wilson's agent makes one last behind-the-scenes run at making a trade happen unless it progresses to actual trade talks. Given the issues from earlier this year and the strong possibility he will make another play for a new team after the season, there are plenty of reasons for him to consider possibility of making the jump to a new team in time to try to get back to the Super Bowl and win it this year. Here's my problem. I don't think a Russell Wilson trade really makes any sense right now. A, he's coming off the injury. That kind of hurts his trade value. B, with his contract, you're limited with what teams he could go to. And oh, by the way, Seattle can't, I don't think, really be fire sale sellers like I teased earlier because your head coach is aging and you don't have your own first round pick. What are you tanking for if you're Seattle? You don't have the nearly the same level of incentive to try to lose games, or maybe try to not win games, as other teams do. Now, make no mistake, even though I know many of you dislike this, this will be revisited with much more credibility in the offseason. It might run into a situation of, hey, it's either Russ or Carroll next year for Seattle. That could be a very real conversation those sides have. Maybe they kiss and make up again, but there were issues. You have to acknowledge that. So looking ahead in, the, in, in your crystal ball, will Russell Wilson be on the Seahawks next year? We'll say for kickoff and give the timing there for the offseason. Why for yes or N for no? Now if you want to bet on or against Seattle, I mean, they're playing the Jags. This should be a, a, a game they win, right? If they can't beat the Jags even with Geno Smith, oh boy, Seattle has issues. Get a 125% deposit bonus when you go to chatsports.com slash bet, use your promo code you see on screen. It's Seahawks125. If you don't know what to bet on, maybe follow my picks. I lead the chat sports office right now in our five picks against the spread this year. 20 oh, you can't shake your head at me, Jeff. You're second to last. Your record is basically inverted of mine. Here are my five picks. Lions plus three and a half. They got to win a game at some point, right? Titans minus one. That game is now a pick em, by the way. Bucks minus five and a half, Browns minus 3.5, and the Chiefs in a get-right game, minus 10 against the Giants. Again, do it with our sportsbook partner, folks, BetUS. Chatsports.com slash bet and use the promo code you guys see on screen. That is Seahawks125. Put down 100 bucks, boom, you get the 125% deposit bonus. Let's talk more trades here. A trade idea from Fan Sighted involving Austin Blythe. And I love this one for Seattle. Now, the Chiefs don't get much, only a seventh round pick, but Blythe is a backup. And I forget who it was. I think it was someone on it was either the comment section or Twitter or whatever asked me about a Blythe for LJ Collier trade. That works too, I think. I think Blythe is a prime target for a Seahawks team because if you're still trying to win games, this is the type of buy low option that could work for you. The Seahawks center play has mostly been Kyle Fuller, by the way, which not, I don't think, what Seattle wanted at the beginning of the offseason. There's been some uh, roster mismanagement, I think, from this team, unfortunately. The play has not been great. Not a disaster, but I wouldn't call it very good either. And Blythe is a former starter. He spent time with the Rams as a three-year starter at center, which, oh, wait, Shane Waldron knows him oh so well. Bit curious why they didn't sign him. Ethan Posick is maybe going to work back in the near future, but it's been Kyle Fuller at center. The entire O-line just hasn't played the way many hoped. Even Dwayne Brown, past couple weeks, doesn't look like his normal self. Blythe always got it out pretty well on pro football focus, but the production, especially in terms of pass protection, never quite matched up with the grades. That's always a bit of a bit of a red flag for me in the end. But for a seventh round pick, bring him in. You can still work other players at guard as well. Folks, Seattle Seahawks today has finally crossed the uh, 2300 subscriber mark. Let's get that up to 24k now because these numbers have not been very good the bosses are mad at me they're not they're not huge fans let's get that changed if you guys want more free seahawks videos all you have to do is subscribe right now to noah ibnogany and we can just call him noah i if that's a bit of a tongue twister for you like it is producer jeff uh, mentioned as a trade target fan side of threw out an ibnogany call your swap which eh, it's fine 
the Dolphins are struggling, and they're in a very weird spot, kind of like Seattle, where their incentives are based on winning now. If they try to tank, they don't have their own first-round pick. That's not a good thing if you are Miami. Now, Noah is a former first-round pick who can't get on the field. But that's the exact type of player Seattle should maybe try to gamble on, given their own issues at corner. Now, Igbin Nogany has not fared well. This Most of these stats, of course, coming in the 2020 season. Co the comp per uh, percentage is okay. The completion percentage is fine. The yards are pretty high for a limited target number. High on the touchdowns, low on the PBUs. But with Marquise Blair now, I'm, he's out for the year. Like I, I know I put asterisks on there. He's not officially on IR, but he's going to be in the very, very near future. Uh, you're down to DJ Reed, Trey Brown, Hugo Amadi. I think Igbenogany could maybe even be a nickel corner for you, or DJ Reed if you had to, or Trey Brown. But, look, Sidney Jones was better against the, 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 the Saints, although their receiving core sucks. Bless Austin, John Reed haven't made an impact yet. I think at minimum... They're not going to be a great backup to Trey Brown, who, by the way, I want Trey Brown as the full-fledged starter. Like, he should be cornerback, too. I don't know if that fixes your issues, but if you're Seattle, maybe going out and adding, uh, even not going to pair with the DJ Reed-Trey Brown combo helps make you feel a little bit better short-term and maybe long-term about your cornerback room moving forward.